Okay, let's see if we can pull this off. Me talking into a mirror, talking into a phone. Uh, hey now, hey now, Green Newfie, continuing on with Kombucha Part 3. So about a week has gone by. It's probably not been exactly a week, but it's been pretty darn close. Uh, our kombucha has been sitting in a relatively cool space with uh, mango and pineapple in it. So now it's about time to get started on the flavoring. So I'm going to do uh, two fills. One is going to be in a keg and the other one's going to be in a bottle. So uh, I basically got the, uh, the container here. Uh, and if we take the cover off, the first thing we'll notice is that we've actually got a secondary SCOBY growing on the top. If you look really closely, you'll see there's, a li like there's this goo that's holding it all together. That's all good. <sniffs> Yummy. Um, that's actually a, a SCOBY. So let me get this off. How do I just hold this? Here we go. Um, so a couple of people have been asking what exactly is a SCOBY and how do you make it? You, you know, it's easier to buy it. It's easier to find somebody that has one and just take a piece of it. Um, but in actual fact, you can grow them very easily as well. If you make the regular pot of tea, so if you take about, um, you know, a, a gallon or two of water and put it in a pot, bring it up to 195, throw in half a dozen tea bags, throw in a cup of sugar and boil it for 10 minutes and then basically... Put a cloth over the top of it and an elastic band around it so it breathes, but you're protecting it so that nothing can crawl in there, no creepy crawlies. Then just take it and put it in a cupboard and let it sit for two weeks. Then pop it out and take a look at it, and you should see this sort of gelatinous goo thing that has grown, uh, that has grown, has grown in there. Uh, if you really get a good one going, it will look like a piece of foam almost. It looks like a big round kind of top of a mushroom. And once you have that, you continue to use it over and over and over again. Like this is a SCOBY here that we are going to throw out because you don't want to ever use a flavored SCOBY. Once you flavor something, uh, you never want to use that SCOBY for the mother. The mother has to be, you got to keep your mother happy, right? Keep the mother in the same container always with no flavoring in it. And then just as, you know, as the time passes, transfer the... Um, the kombucha from the pot with the mother into a secondary pot and then flavor your arse off. You can flavor it with whatever you want, um, but and, and it's going to grow a scoby, but then you have to take this scoby and chuck it. So that's what I'm going to do first. Um, so first off, I'm going to filter it into a keg. And after that, I'm going to do a few bottles just for fun. Um, this is old sort of brewing 101 to anybody that... Um, oh, I can't do it that way. Okay, here we go. Brewing 101. So this thing here is a, um, a, a racking tube. So it's just a plastic tube with a long, um, so it's, a, it's a glass tube with a long plastic tube attached to it. Uh, and that's just easier to get it out of the big container into the keg. Now, if you're making a small batch, you don't need to have a racking tube, obviously. Um, you can just filter it directly into another vessel. So I'll do that when I get to uh, the next stage, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you a keg first for those that want to put it in a keg. Um, so what I have is a filter right here on top of a mesh bag. And there's actually another mesh bag, mesh bag underneath it, and then another filter on top of that. And then I funnel the whole thing into just a, that's just a funnel. So I'm going to fill that up, and then I'm going to close it off. And then I always have a ton left over, and I should have enough left over to make a couple bottles here just to show you how to do bottles. But uh, if you're not kegging, then you literally just pour it through the funnel into another container. And then take line up all your empty bottles, and you're going to pour it directly into your empty bottles. So give me a minute. I'm going to get this thing started, and I will be right back. Okay, so here we go. Uh, it's starting to go down as you can see. It goes down the tube and it's going right into the filter. So the filter is taking out all the chunks and it's slowly filling up the keg. If you had a, you know, uh, the other, like, see, the other option is, is you get a bowl and you just put all this filter, get up on top of the bowl or find, you know, find any kind of filter you can at all. Uh, set it on top of the bowl and just fill up your bowl. So both roads will lead you to the same destination. Once you get it filtered and into a bowl, then you can use a filter to start filling up your bottle. So I will just continue to let this pour and be back. So off she goes. She continues away. I got a couple of clips in place to hold everything so you don't have to sit there holding it, which you sometimes have to do. Uh, and you see it's starting to go down. We're about halfway there. Uh, I've got a couple of containers, just general, doesn't have to be any kind of specific containers on the ground, ready to go. Once this is done, I'm just going to transfer the whole rig from there into one of the uh, containers. And then I've got a bunch of old kombucha bottles lined up, ready to go to fill up the last little bit. So, be back in a sec. 
Okay, everybody. So finishing touches for the keg. Uh, she's clammed up. Uh, no, any, no uh, leaking or anything around the seal there. You can just spray some soapy water around and make sure you don't get any bubbles so it uses up all your CO2. Uh, put the CO2 tank on. Put the pressure up to 30. I'll leave it there for a day or so just at 30. Give it a shake every now and then. Uh, and then after a couple of days, I will turn the pressure down to about 10. And that's perfect for serving. So that's it for kegs. Okay, on to bottles. Okay, so basically wound up getting a couple extra jars, and this can often get quite messy, but I'm sure there's probably a, a better way to do it than this. But I just fill them up one by one, and then you take the funnel out, and on to the next one. Now because these have been filtered pretty well, you shouldn't run the risk of having another SCOBY grow. But... If they sit, you know, you got to let these sit for about a week to, oh, geez, uh, before they're really ready to rock and roll. And you may very well look in there and see um, some scobies growing. Uh, but if that's the case, it's not a big deal. They're only small. And you can eat scobies. They're not going to kill you. It's actually pretty good for you. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, next, I'm just going to cap them off. And then uh, I think I showed you my little kombucha storage room out here <clears throat> and I basically just put them all in there so uh, here's an example of one that has a little scoby growing see there on the top that's a little scoby and it looks kind of disgusting you probably wouldn't want to drink it although it isn't going to hurt you at all there's another one there a little tiny scoby I got a couple other ones here that were pretty clean um, now these guys right there, this guy right here, I did a separate flavoring of that all together. So that one's supposed to have a SCOBY. And then I'll filter that out and I'll put that in the bottles. But I keep a whole bunch of, you know, just random kombucha bottles here and there. So you can keep them somewhere in a cool space. They should last you a long time. So that's basically it. Uh, not rocket science. There is a little bit of time involved in it. So if you want to, uh, you know, the trick, the, you'll, you'll get into a routine after a while. Where if you continually keep the mother uh, container full, you're always going to have um, a, a starter. So you'll always have your SCOBY uh, ready to, you know, ready in your, your kombucha in with the mother. And you can let it sit for a couple of weeks sometimes and it doesn't really make any difference at all. And then I, so I always have a full batch of tea in with the mother in it. And then I tap off into a plastic container and then I flavor and about a week for flavoring then you can just stick it in the bottles and like I said, if you have big jugs you can use big jugs that works just as well it's a whole lot easier than filling out little plastic bottles or little uh, little small glass bottles uh, and you can buy these big pint jugs and all that kind of stuff in, in any store so uh, yeah so if you, uh, you like uh, I, always in my upstairs bathroom I've got that great big jug that big uh, brew pot of a tea with the mother and then as soon as I tap off the seven gallon, or the six gallon bucket, I fill it up again and I let it sit for a week and I put it in the taps and I put it in bottles and I drink it. And then next thing, a week or two has passed and I'll take the stuff out of the mother again, put it in another container, flavor it with something else. Uh, and you can get fancy, you know, you can go into a store and buy whatever kombucha you, you like and look and see what they flavor it with and use that as a, as a recipe. Uh, <clears throat> I, I have literally flavored with anything and everything. Um, I, I, you know, I, again, my, things like, uh, like no pal cactus and mint is one of my favorites or blueberry and strawberry. Blueberry and strawberry is kind of nice. Even blueberry and strawberry on their own are very nice. I've done every kind of mango and peach nectarine. Um, yeah, basically any kind of fruit you'd like. You can throw it in there, let it sit a week, then rack it out, put it in bottles, screw the tops on pretty tight because that pressure has to build up. And that, as it starts to ferment and continue to bubble and bubble and bubble, um, now, oh, right, the trick, sometimes you can get Mount Vesuvius with, um, a bottle of kombucha F until you get down, until you get it down to a science, you should always try to open your kombucha in a sink. Uh, and you may even want to put, I have a, sometimes if I think it's going to be, if it's going to blow, um, I'll put a, a container over the top of it. Because sometimes, literally, they can go shoot right to the ceiling if they get too pressurized, if you leave it too long. Um, but it's, it's, it's not a problem. You know, you'll, you'll know quick enough. Usually, it's not even a problem. It'll start fizzing, and it'll start bubbling up. So just tighten it back again, let it rest for a minute, and then crack it just a hair and let some of the air escape. 
Uh, and then after a while, just get some ice, pour it on, and you're good to go. So that's it. Kombucha 101. Good luck. I want to see results. I want to see pictures. I want everybody that makes a batch to post it. I want to hear what they put in it, what it tastes like. If it tastes good, bad, or crap, I want to hear it all. So lots of pictures. Best of luck. And, uh, you know, watch the video over, over a couple times. And uh, it's just practice. It's like everything else. Practice, practice, practice. Long mirror, big jib, draw. But remember, it's going to draw a lot further and healthier if you give it good food. See you, everybody.